tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. with my best friend tony what's up buddy what's happening brother nothing um you know at the beginning of each year we we try to uh bring on um i don't want to call it new year resolution but it's kind of new year resolution type stuff um but yeah so today it's kind of that like um but today is more of a pain point it's less of like a i'm going to be committed to myself but it's a pain point that i think we can help people out with yeah yeah it's a pain point that people are going through but hopefully uh today's conversation can help with that pain point and uh relieve some of that pain yeah actually when we were doing pre-talk we were chatting that you and i are very fortunate because both of us have a uh, government health insurance you know i think uh thanks to our spouses you know <laughs> i recommend anyone to marry someone in the government or in like you like yeah i don't know school systems or something i've been on government uh well, government insurance my whole life. <laughs> That's a different story, different kind of insurance. <laughs> Fair enough, though. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk a, a little bit about health insurance. And and we know that uh, as an industry, we're probably under par from, from where we should be. I know that um, I, I certainly actually, I'd, I'd kind of get into the, I'd like to get into the numbers and stuff. But, you know, with the suites, with, with with the sweet world kind of taking over a little bit or being a big percentage of our industry now, um, I think that it, uh, if you're lucky enough to work in a salon with health insurance, you know, now if you're in a suite, you don't have that access. So, you know, we're just trying to talk about access to health insurance and, and what does it mean and, and, and how can we as an industry get involved? Yeah. Anytime that we can, you know, gear a conversation around that's going to elevate just people in our industry and, or help them in some type of way or an opportunity to, to get, you know, a little further along with something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, you know, it might sound like a promotion, but it, it's not, it, it's something that we want to have this conversation to, to really help anybody that actually needs it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, literally just last week, I was in the back room and, and some of our colleagues were talking about their struggles with health care. Um, I, I tried to nail them up with a couple questions, but, you know, they were they were in frustration mode. So <laughs> I think they were in frustration mode. So it's just a lot of four letter words talking about health insurance. So hopefully we can get through some of that stuff um, um, today. Um, but uh, so. A little backstory is our dear, dear friend, Lindsay Smith, reached out to us and she's like, hey, um, I, I really want to bring health insurance to, you know, the industry. So she reached out um, and, and, and asked if we could have this conversation. And I said, absolutely, let, let's have the conversation. Because, again, um, you know, as of last week, people having conversations in the back room, you know, um, I'm not upset. Well, upset about it and, and where to turn to. So anyways, uh, let's get in. And then Lindsay, she uh, she's bringing in her friend, Mary Hope Rich. And Mary Hope Rich is going to like uh, kind of guide us through about, you know, how to get the insurance and all that stuff and what it even means. And hopefully we'll we'll be intelligent enough to uh, to ask the right questions. All right. All right. <laughs> Sound good? Sounds good, brother. So Miss Lindsay and Miss Mary, welcome to your day off. Hello, friends. Hi. Hi. Hi thanks so much. How have you guys been? We've been good. It has been a wild year. I cannot believe that the new year is just like, I mean, being able to recognize like all of 2023 for me was just learning in a way, like a fast paced learning year for me. So I'm really excited about 2024. I love that you two kind of kicked it off with that concept of using this time, using the new year as a moment to kind of like, I'm not a big believer in New Year's resolutions, but I am a believer in like benchmarks and looking at like, okay, these are the accomplishments that I've stepped into, the challenges I've overcome. And then this is sort of the direction that I see those pointing me into looking ahead. And so, yeah, this, this 2024 year for me, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I'm really excited about it. Same. Absolutely. Um, so uh, Lynn's kind of tell us a little bit about like, where you saw the need here kind of tell us the story about about you know your relationship with healthcare in the industry because because again i mean i i feel 
I feel weird because we've been in such a good, you know, position as far as healthcare goes, but I know the majority of the industry has not. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know me, I feel like I've been on here a few times. So now I'm like, Oh, hi everyone. How are you? Like I'm an <laughs> old, old friend. Um, if you are not connected with me already, I would love to connect with you listening. I am the founder of Commonwealth Collective and my focus has been in supporting the business needs of the beauty barber industry, uh, even before I started my community. So as a, a hairstylist and a makeup artist, I've navigated pain points throughout my 15 years in the industry and health insurance is definitely one of them. And so as our community has grown, I'm always looking to build relationships. That's my entire format with people who can support our industry in bigger capacities outside of my skill set. And so Mary and I connected um, early in 2023, and she became a brand partner for us throughout the year, sponsored events, and connected me with a lot of resource around business insurance in general and insurance needs for entrepreneurs, which is always important. And we really focused on offering insurance to our community in ways that are focused on growth. So we all know we need insurance in different capacities, whatever that looks like, but are we really taking the time to look at like, what is that insurance positioning us for in the long game versus like, this is what we need today to whatever X, Y, Z. And so as we started navigating our relationship, one of the things that came up was health benefits and health insurance. And I have been underinsured or uninsured many times in my career. And the more I started to kind of dissect and think about my partner is a carpenter, woodworker. He's also been underinsured or uninsured most of his career. My dad owned a plumbing business, blue collar. We grew up on state-based health insurance. Um, My dad passed away from a heart attack at 49 and, and definitely I know did not take care of his health in the way that he should have. And so again, recognizing the pain point of health insurance and health benefits within our industry or any entrepreneurship trade-based industry, it was eye-opening to recognize that this is not just like a tiny issue. This is like a major, major, major issue. And for me to be able to even support myself and my partner around this, just that alone was beneficial. And then being able to work with Mary and recognize like, wait a second, if we kind of come together collectively and say, Hey, look at, there's a lot of us like, yes, we're, you know, smaller businesses, maybe independents or maybe, you know, small team-based businesses. But if we can collectively come to these bigger markets and say, Hey, what can you do for us as the little guy? If we're all coming collectively, 50,000 of us, 60,000 of us in the beauty industry within Commonwealth collective, can you give us a better offer? And can you really help us understand what, what our options look like, because I think that's also one of the biggest things is that empowerment around the awareness and the education. I know for me, the marketplace is overwhelming and confusing. I've looked on it many times I've quoted. And honestly, for me, what I usually have ended on is, you know what? I'm healthy. I'm 35. Do I even need this? This is too expensive. I'm just going to, I'll just, you know, roll the dice and take my chances. And for me this year, um, that was really, there was a lot around that. And I, I shared this with you both before we, we opened, but I was really surprised at how I've been very emotionally attached to this offer because I have had a lot of health issues this year. I've been going through infertility shifts in my own life and, um, losses. And it's just been so eye opening to recognize that like, this is not just, um, a tiny thing for me even anymore. This is now like, how do I set up the rest of my adult life in a way where I'm not paying medical bills forever, where I'm not, you know, putting myself into a financial situation that is so astronomical that I'm never going to be able to climb out. And so recognizing benefits, you know, it's such a big conversation. And I think Mary being able to come in and support me and then through me, our community and through our community, our industry, it's really, it's really powerful. That, I mean, again, it's just, it's so cool that, that we can kind of all do this as an industry, you know, um, Mary, I, 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 Lindsay brought up a couple of things that I kind of want to, you know, ask or address and ask is, is, you know, and the one thing, which I think is a huge pain point for a lot of the industry is being, you know, not just not insured, but, but also underinsured. So what's that line as far as like how much insurance, we should have or need, or, 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 or is that even fair to, to ask? So insurance, whether it's your business insurance or health insurance is 
or health coverages, whatever you're kind of looking for in the market and for that support is really an individual journey, right? It, it speaks exactly to what Lindsay was just talking about. Someone who's starting their career at you know, 20, 25 has very different needs than someone who's in their 30s, who has very different needs than someone who's in their 40s. And that on top of the industry just being so diverse of, you know, am I an individual? Am I a salon owner? Am I a business owner? Do I have W-2 employees? Do I have independents that are renting chairs for me? Do I have a salon suite? You've just totally hit the nail on the head of the complex problem I was looking at and trying to figure out, okay, how do I be of service? How do we help? Um, because we are a diverse industry. And so what we've looked at this from is a group perspective of, okay, we need to have kind of modular buildable coverages because someone, as I mentioned, as Lindsay did at the beginning of their career needs A, someone in the middle of their career needs B and someone at the end needs C. And so, okay, we need options. And this is what this is all about of not going out and saying, you need to have A, B, and C with this types of limits. It's said it's, let's look at your life. What does your life look like? What are your goals? And let's create a path to get you to somewhere where you are comfortable now and where you'll be comfortable in five years from now. Do you guys, will you guys help with that? Like, I might Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. This is, this is the complete um, mantra of Guild Insurance and all of our partners that help with our ancillary coverages like health insurance is this is white glove. This is personal. The insurance carriers, because they're marketing geniuses and it's a true issue, mark to us when business and health insurance with these calamities. And yes, calamities happen. And I want you to have insurance to protect against that rare risk when the tornado does come down the street, right? I want you to be protected in those rarities. But insurance is actually, especially for business owners and for professionals, business whether or insurance whether it's business or health insurance can really be a tool and that's how i want you to think about it so the people on the other end of the line when you reach out um through cbc to get um you know a consultation on your insurance they're there in a specialist capacity like they are knowledgeable of your industry they're knowledgeable of the coverages and they want to talk to you this is not a call center scenario or an online marketplace scenario where you're on your own and it's complex and it's scary and it comes up a thousand options and you don't know what to do because you're looking at a screen and then you shop at price because, well, that's what you can understand. Um, this is much more tailored to that specialist and discussion based. The enrollers on the healthcare side want to talk to you. They want to know the details. They want to understand what you're going through now what you have gone through in the past and where you want to go and that way they can walk you through what options make sense because this isn't here you can have this and that's it it's let's have a discussion and tailor something that works for you we're trying to build a personalized process and it's really it's something i've heard the two of you talk about it's something that's very personal to, to Lindsay and it's very personal to myself as well is that Small business in our economy usually means, you know, 100 employees or less, but our economy is actually businesses and individuals and they're tiny and tiny businesses and individuals don't have big bats and they don't have fancy options and they don't absolutely do not have access to personalized specialist conversations. This is just not something that's built. It's, it's hard to do. And so that was our, our goal. Like it has to be personal. We have to change. We have options and I am so glad that we do, that we have marketplaces, thank goodness. But what else? What else can we bring to the table for someone who wants to have that conversation, someone who wants to have more details and someone who doesn't want to handle it themselves and just be online and, and take care of it, right? They want something more and I want to be there with that more. So Mary, can you, so are you offering both individual coverage as well as salon coverage? So like if I'm like a salon owner with like, I don't know, 15 employees or something, um, is that an option as well? Yeah. So there's um, multiple paths that, that can be taken. So you can come in as an individual, you can come in as a salon owner, you can come in as a salon owner or a business owner 
that has employees. You can come in as a salon owner that has um, only chair rentals, right? We can, we know the industry is diverse and we know creatives are diverse. So when we talk about beauty and barbery and professionals, we know that someone in the barbering community needs to be comfortable. Someone in the med spa community needs to be comfortable coming here. This is not just for stylists and this is not just for salon owners. If you're in the beauty, barbering and professional industry in, in this world, we could bring you to in the US, you can help you. And that's, and that's the goal. And so whatever your structure is, you can come to the table, we'll figure it out. That's also like, even again, like I mentioned, my partner is a carpenter. He's going through this program. He's self-employed. He has a contracted employee that supports him. This is exactly the kind of thing that he needs at this stage. And then as his company grows and as he grows as an entrepreneur, this can evolve with him. And for him to be able to potentially as a small business owner, offer his employees in the future benefits, like that is such a a uh, rarity within the carpentry or the woodworking community as a small business. And that is also very rare within our industry. It is difficult for owners to have access to benefits and be able to extend those benefits to potential team-based models. And so for Mary and I, again, as we've talked, we've built a relationship over this last year. So we have gotten to know each other really, really well. And so as we've talked about what our community faces as challenges, we look at independents who are very overwhelmed with all of the, the tasks and responsibilities that they have. And then you add on these other things that are necessary, like insurance, whether that's business or, or health, to have somebody like Mary or, or her team come in and support them and be like, listen, let us know what you need. We're going to come back with package options. We're going to look at your growth and say, this is where you want to be in five years. Let's work backwards. And then for for team-based owners, we are really recognizing that team-based salon owners are struggling to find quality employees. They're struggling to retain, they're struggling to hire. And so if we can create for them robust benefit packages that then they can leverage and pivot so that they're standing out within their community and they're attracting professional employees who want to come into a team-based model and then have access to health insurance and benefits for themselves and their family. Like it's just such a no brainer. It's such, this is whatever you need, whatever customization you need, it's available under this umbrella. So for us to be able to roll out that, I'm just so excited to see how this can evolve. You know, Mary and I have talked to um, barbering academies and schools and places, like there's just so much expansion that's needed here. And those artists coming right out of licensing, even if they're just looking at telehealth, even if they're, you know, they're young, they don't need a ton, but if they have access to tel telehealth, you know, I know both of you really, really, really emphasize the importance of mental health here at your day off. And I loved your focus when you really targeted that as a month topic and going in through mental health, I mean, even just being able to access telehealth in that capacity for under a hundred dollars a month, like it's just so it's really customized. There's so many different ways that we can't even really outline exactly how it'll fit, but it'll fit every single person who goes through this process with us. I love that because a lot of times when you try to uh, sign up for something, it seemed like it's written by lawyers to, more, more or less to protect the, the person that's selling what you're trying to buy. And you don't quite understand. So to have somebody there to help you select and get to know you and get to know your needs and help you fill that out, I think that is fantastic. Yeah, I do too. I love the whole white glove um, um, aspect of it. And, and, and Lindsay, you brought something up uh, about like family coverage too. So I, I assume that that, that there's family coverage as well. Um, so, you know, even if, even if you're, you know, married or have kids and you're in a salon in a suite or a salon, you know, there's cover there, there's family coverage there as well. Yeah. Family coverage options as well. Um, again, being able to kind of really look at like, I'm, I'm 35. We are actively trying to start our own family. That is something that I'm of course going to put at the top of the list of my medical needs. So when I'm looking at health insurance, that's most important to me when I'm like looking at package options, when I'm looking at, you know, what coverage I'm, I'm going to need, that is my most important, but for you know, someone else that might not be important at all. So why would they want to pay for that package or that op option when they don't need that? whatsoever within their path. So being able to really look at like, 
where you are at, like, like Mary said, it's, it's taking everything into consideration. Where are you at today? And then where do you want to be there? There's, there's a many different ways that we can structure things that are going to be most supportive, but it's, it's different from just like, here's a landing page, go get insurance. It's, it's not, that's not what I, I've said this from the very beginning. I don't sell health insurance. Like that is not, I don't want to, I'm never going to, it's not my focus. I want to provide resources and support to our industry. And this is a way for me to do that. This is an outlet that I've recognized as a huge need for myself personally. And I've always really seen within my career path, when something's important to me, it's important to others. That's how this community started. I, I created Commonwealth because of my own needs, what I could not find, what I was looking for within the industry, specifically to my business and my growth. And so this is another extension of recognizing this is what I need in my life right now in this chapter, this season. And as I've navigated that with Mary, it just became very clear that this is needed way beyond me and way beyond my capacity. Hey, Linz, are you, so do you have a family plan with you and your partner? Or do you guys have two separate plans? We just, uh, so we rolled out Michigan, California, Illinois and Texas as our test market. So Brett and I are first in line and we're going to be navigating exactly what that looks like. So as this episode airs, we will be covered. And I, I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to structure something that puts us both in a plan together. Um, and we can kind of navigate from there what our individual needs look like or what our unique needs look like. But I really love that in some structure, one way or the other, we will both be insured and we will both have a growth strategy, whether that's me and my, you know, maternity journey and, and what that looks like and Brett and his business and potentially supporting his future employees. So we will both have options, whatever that looks like. That's very cool. Um, that's, that's cool. I like yeah. that. Today, oh. as we're recording is actually our, our official, like first day that we're sending all of our intake into our partners to get all of our onboarding started. So yeah, it's a really, it, it's new. This is a new option and it's just really exciting to see how this is going to continue to change with everyone that we're in contact with. You know, Mary and I, our entire objective is to just get awareness. We just want people to know this is out there. It's an option. It's an opportunity for people to understand what it is that they need. And then if they choose to purchase through Commonwealth, awesome. If this is something that fits their needs and, and their budget and, and supports them, amazing. But if nothing else, like recognizing that we're having these conversations and we're collectively saying like, why haven't we had access to this as an industry? Why don't we have group policies? Why can't, you know, this needs to change. We need to be able to rule this out in a way that our industry is looked at just as professionally as any other corporate industry. And we're able to kind of create opportunities like this, regardless of the fact that we're, you know, trade-based. That's amazing. Love it. Mary, can you kind of explain to me, um, we're going to get to the more generic questions now. Like, like <laughs> we often hear about like the marketplace, but how does the marketplace work? You know, as you're, as you're, as we're shopping for health insurance um, again, how does the marketplace work? So I'll talk to you really generally um, because it's a state-based program. Um, but essentially what you typically find in the marketplace are high deductible. Um, what does the marketplace what? mean though? Like if I'm shopping it, people keep talking about like, what is the marketplace and what does it mean? Okay. So if you don't have um, insurance through your employer, we've now have this opportunity through the government um, and essentially through um, ACA or Obamacare, right? We now have marketplace healthcare. And so if you don't have it on your own, you can go and search for your state marketplace if it's accessible to you and search for insurance needs there. And insurance carriers have um, put up uh, policies on the marketplace so you can go and search. Um, so you can go in and see what you can find that looks like it would be a good fit for your business and for your individually, for your family. Um, but it is, it is a marketplace, right? So there's lots of different options, lots of different carriers. It tends to be um, high deductible, um, so very expensive. Um, and then, so it's, it can be, I don't want to, you know, it can be scary. It's just overwhelming, right? I think is the feedback um, and Lindsay can speak to that more directly. Yeah. And so we really wanted to say, okay, well, that's great. Like I, I have somewhere to go, but what else can we do to kind of give other options? Like I like to shop, 
Uh, you know, I want to know that I'm getting a good deal. It, that's the, uh, it's such a pain point for me. Uh, it's very personal. Of If I think I got ripped off, like, oh, had I not just searched one more website, like, dang it. Um, and it's that sentiment, sentimentality of like, okay, like, what do we, what's out there? Like, I'm, I'm going to do my homework and I'm going to look at options. And that's what I want to have for the industry of, we might not have what you want, right? But I want you to be able to say, I, I looked, I had other places to go and I was able to shop around, like truly shop around. Um, and that really hasn't been um, available before because it's just right now, a lot of business owners are, are in the scenario where they go to a program administrator and they say, all right, I need, or, or an insurance broker and say, I need healthcare for my three employees. Well, that's, not really a great way to negotiate prices, right? Instead, we've been able to come together and say, okay, look, I have, you know, Guild Insurance operates mainly through partnerships. So we're able to go to our insurance partners and our partner insurance providers and partner agencies and say, look, Lindsay's my partner, CWC is my partner, and they have 60,000 people minimum in their reach, just based on their social numbers. What can we do with that? Like these are 60,000 real people. This is very different than one salon owner or one business owner going and saying, okay, price me out three people. We went to the table and said, all right, price me out 60,000. Treat Lindsay like she's friggin' GM. Let's go. And so it's a very different scenario. And again, it might not be what the industry wants it might not be what that individual wants but i want them to be able to go and say okay i was i had options like i didn't wasn't forced down this only one path let's just see what else is out there i get to look at more than one car like please let me let look at more than one car All right, today i don't feel like buying a ford like what else can i get yeah and um, i'll share from like the health yeah. the, the marketplace i mean it's pages of policies, you know, very filter based. So you can put like, okay, deductible, I want to pay X amount and I need that, you know, you can kind of check box. This is what I need. These are kind of like the generic things that I know would be important to me. And then generating from that are policies, you know, here's this and this and this, and it's just pages of like, how do I know? I mean, again, I, I, I'm an intelligent woman. I run a business. I can make strategic decisions. I know how to shop, but when I'm on spaces like that with no one guiding me with no one, like, I don't know, you know, I'm reading through and just kind of guessing, like, maybe this is what I want. And I think when we're thinking through insurance, again, as a growth strategy, I don't want to make a decision like that. I don't want to make a decision where I'm just kind of like, I guess this is good. I, is this good? Is this the right price? Is this what I should be paying? And again, like even just looking at that, unfortunately for me, many times I have looked at those monthly premiums and just decided this isn't, this is not even worth the resource. I can't even justify this expense because I don't, I don't need, you know, quote unquote health care right now. I'm, I'm healthy. And I know that mentality is what keeps us stuck in this pattern or this cycle of being in like an unpowered. I want to empower people to be like, wait a second. I know exactly what I need. I know exactly because I have this resource of an agency that is really giving me specific recommendations because they've gotten to know my industry and they've gotten to know my business specifically. So like we talked about salon owners who have multiple different structures, you know, I work with communities and, and, and spaces that really want to tap into that hybrid model where they have commission stylists, they have renters, they have, you know, maybe even a, a shared uh, event space that they can kind of leverage and they have all these different revenue streams. How do we create packages and policies for them? How do we create that really customized piece as a affordable option for their business model. And so like Mary said, like we're going in like GM, which is the, the way that I explained when we were talking to someone together, I had kind of said, listen, this is how I thought about it. If, you know, big company comes and they've got 500 employees, they can come in and say, what are you going to do for us? We're going to take our business and we're going to present it to you, 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 and you, who's going to give us our, you know, our best options. And then we'll go from there. You know, me ind independently, Lindsay Smith, as a hairstylist in Chicago, I couldn't call up Blue Cross Blue Shield and be like, what are you going to do for me? I'm going to take my business elsewhere. You know, like they're going to, they're going to be like, okay, lady, sounds good. Like, so being able to together collectively 
negotiate, you know, we, I personally really sat in and said, I know our community is going to want this. I know our community is going to need this. I know, I mean, we had those conversations. So I was able to use my voice and my experience to say, Mary, this is what we would want. Can you help us leverage this? Can we come up with something like this? And she was able to help put me in that space all through relationships. Again, like she said, she runs with, with partnerships. So that's the structure that we've kind of collaborated through. Like, what can we bring our, how can we pool our resources? That's what we're doing. We're pooling our resources and we're bringing it together and, and making it accessible. All right. I have a couple questions now. Um, well, what, 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 what generic you know? questions. You said we were doing generic questions. Now. <laughs> hold, on, hold on. You got me. <laughs> So I'm wondering if you said, Lindsay, was that that you didn't want to make the decision. And and immediately I thought, like, as a salon owner, you're also making that decision for yes. you know, maybe 20 other people. So yes. so is this program, can we do 20 different policies within a salon that says, hey, if you're an assistant, you need less. And if you're early, yes. young in the salon, do you need less coverage as opposed to someone who uh, you may or may not be in their mid 50s? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, yeah. Exactly. Let me uh, just real quick just say, right. The salon owner can be empowered to say, "Here's the policy for my salon." The employees have the power to say, "No thanks." What else is out there? And even through Lindsay's program of like, okay, I, I would like my own policy. Right. There's not this tie of you have to have this. There are options that they can go in as an individual, and as an individual you still have options for spouse and for family coverages, right? This is, this is dynamic. It's meant to be. Um, so there are options that can be uh, considered. Yeah. And I just want to share one other thing about that is, is not having open enrollment, not being a, um, committed to open enrollment. So being able to come on to that structure at any stage, I, I think again, is really important to, to recognize because that is something again, in my world, I have never understood why do we only have this much time to make a decision? Why do I have to know exactly what I'm going to need right now in this window of time? And so being able to, to take that off the table and not worry about that. If someone's career changes, you know, if they leave a salon or they started a new salon or they come at, you know, like we don't, our lives don't work like that. Our lives aren't based on this, you know, small window of time for the rest of the year. And so being able to kind of customize even in that capacity is just phenomenal. It's so cool. It's really, really customizable. That's the thing. Like I don't, there's no other, like there's so many, it, it's like choose your own adventure. That's kind of what I'm thinking about as I say that. Like you can literally choose your own adventure. Like which direction is valuable to you individually. So really accommodating whatever structure, whatever business model and then even within that, we can't just lump salon owners all together and say like, oh, well, this is a, this is a policy for salon owners and this is a policy for independence. Like, no, because there's so much nuance even between that. So that's the white glove service that Mary's talking about. It's, it's completely tailored and customized. So if someone was an employee at a salon and they, you know, they end up with the insurance and they, and they left that salon now, would they be able to keep that policy? So it, de it depends on the scenario, um, but I'm going to start the answer with the healthcare that we're in the healthcare options that you're getting through Lindsay is through an agency, right? We are an agent. So if you are changing jobs and you are moving careers, you're moving states, whatever that life occurring moment is, you're going to reach out. And in fact, we're going to reach out as well, our partner agency for the health side, right? This is a relationship. And so it's not going to be, I'm going to have life changes and I'm not gonna ever talk to anybody ever again. It's going to be, okay, someone's actually gonna know because the salon owner is gonna let us know, but you're gonna be reached out anyway, but you should actually be proactive and have that relationship with your agency anyway, so we can have this ongoing communication. So what happens is if you are a individual, right? And you have an individual policy that goes with you wherever you go. You move from a salon suite to a salon, a salon to a salon suite, you go and start your own business, whatever that may be, it goes with you. If you are a employee as in a W2 with a salon owner and you've taken that salon owner's 
uh, policy, if you've gone with their, their choices, then you can't take that with you in that package. You can talk to your enroller and your agency and say, all right, I'm, I'm going, what are we going to do? So you can have your own, you know, policy. We can talk to them about what changes need to be made. They also, if this is, cause this is the goal, you might change salons and the new salon might have one of our programs, right? And we just sign you up into the new program because we want this to be, um, you know, seamless, right? So it's a very different trajectory. Like you're not going to be alone anymore, right? You might be, and Lindsay and I talk about this all the time. You might be an independent business. You might be an independent stylist, but that does not mean that you are alone. You're not off on an island by yourself. You have people and we're going to be part of that network for you. Mm, love that. Okay. Uh, tough question. So what, like, like, like it, it, it sounds like to me that, that what we're trying to do is we're trying to group together a lot of people so we can get cheaper policies. Right. So, so if that's the way that the work, if that's the way that it works, so, you know, the, the, the potential is that on day one, you have one or zero people enrolled in a group policy. And then, you know, a year from now or two years from now, you have a bunch of people um, enrolled, you know, now you have thousands of people enrolled potentially like, like how does that, does that make my insurance cheaper as you, as, as you move forward or how does that work? So Real quick if, though, too, can okay. I, add, can I say something, Mary? Cheaper is, is maybe one part of what that is. I mean, again, in that like grouping together, yes, possibly we have like pricing benefits of that. But I think the other thing that I really want to double down on is it's, it's also including the, the access to understanding and the information around this is why this is important for you. So it's that white glove tailor. Yes, it might be cheaper. I, I do believe that there, that will be the big thing most people recognize, but it's also just understanding your policy. So what is a deductible? What is a, you know, what, when will this come into play? And I know for my brain, that's, I want to know how it's applicable to me. Like, what is this going to do for me in this life chapter season. So just to kind of clarify, yes, it might be cheaper, but there's also a million other reasons that we, if as a larger body of people coming together, we open up a lot of doors that way. We get, we get more customization, we get more robust packages, we get, there's a lot of things outside of just the price point. So I just want to say that. Perfect. Mary? Yeah, no worries. Yeah. So today, if we go to the table and we say we have 60,000 people, we have access to 60,000. Let's see who signs up. And in the future, we find out because the messaging has been so wonderful and everybody's hearing the news and we've uh, worked together as an industry and networked and really gotten the message out. In the future, we figure out, oh, we signed up 200,000 people. Well, I get to go back to the table, right? I get to go back to my partners and say, hey, we did really great. What else can we do? Right. So that's the idea that it, it is a product that we built now and it's a product that can be, um, you know, worked on the carriers. If we're coming to them with people, right. It, it allows them to understand the risks better, allows them to build better products and allows us to price them better. Right. It's about knowing who's coming to the table and giving them knowledge points, right? And so we'll be able to um, grow as the community grows. That's really good. All right, uh, quickly, we've, we've been talking for about 35 minutes now. We have yet to say where people can find the information. So where can people find the information? Well, obviously, anyone who has any questions at all, please connect with us at Commonwealth. So my my role in this is, is getting this message out to my community and, and through my, my friends, through your day off, through the two of you, being able to really point to this option. So under Commonwealth, you'll see within our link in bio, a landing page that you can fill out a form and get your intake started. And then that will go on to our partners and then they will connect with you and get you on a call. So again, this is like, you're going to be talking to a human being. So that's the first step. Obviously you guys will link everything in the show notes, but that would be step one. Just, just get the information, get, get, um, you know, connected with somebody who can start answering questions and get to know you first and foremost. That's, that's awesome. And then Lynn's, do you have a website as well? Yep. So it's, it's all linked. So common, commonwealth, 
Collective's website, we have a landing page. Our campaign is Wealth is Health. Oh, I love that. Yeah, you know, I mean, again, I think it, it might sound cliche, but really when I think about my facilitation in, in, in our community and talking to so many different entrepreneurs, like wealth is a, is a personalized thing. What wealth means to me is different from what wealth means to Mary and different from what wealth means to the two of you. But the one thing I think we really honestly can agree on, like our health is one of our biggest resources. If we are not individually healthy, our businesses aren't healthy. Our families aren't healthy. Our relationships aren't healthy. Like that it starts with our health and, and that can, really change the trajectory of your career and your goals. And so we want to lay that foundation together. We want to make sure that our community is healthy from the ground up and everybody within it is healthy and has access to the tools that they need to have that health. That's awesome. Yeah, love that. Yeah, that's so good. I, I, I listen, I, I commend both of you to, um, you know, try to, to try to slay this, uh, the, the, this big healthcare dragon. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, again, I, you, no lie, you know, just last week, people were in the back room, you know, yelling about health insurance and stuff. So I commend both of you guys for, uh, for, 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 for doing this and having a space for, for professionals to, uh, beauty professionals to come and hang out and, and, and take a look at, at what you guys have. Um, Lens. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, getting us, uh, getting in touch with us and to have this conversation. Thanks for introducing us to Mary and, uh, Lens, are we going to see you at Presley Poe? Of course, yes. And thank you both for, for just recognizing the importance of having conversations like this, recognizing that like these conversations are what start change. And the more we just speak up and use our voices of like, hey, we I have a problem with something. I'm something's not working for me and I need a solution, like that that conversation alone just starts the ball rolling and gets the momentum going around how we together collectively as an industry make change. So thank you for giving Mary and I the space to come on and use our voices and say that we, we want that change to happen. Absolutely. Appreciate uh, it. You know, Lens, anytime you need something from us, you know, you, you, you let us, <laughs> you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, de we'll definitely bring you on. Um, yeah. Right back at you. Miss Lindsay Smith, miss, I'm going to try again. Mary. <laughs> what was the other name, Mary? <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Officially it's Mary Duggan Hoprich. <laughs> How about we just go and just call me Mary? It's fine. Just call me Mary. Just call me Mary. It's all right. Just call me Good. Mary. Just call me Mary. Uh, yeah. That, that yeah. joke that was going to take us way off track. So. Yeah, I said, like, no, let's not go down that path. Yeah. <laughs> just call me Mary. So just call me Mary. <laughs> Lindsay Smith. Thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.